Welcome to your first one show of the week with Lauren Laverne. And Jermaine Genus. We think you're going to be over the moon with tonight's spectacle of a show as we're hoping to witness an out of this world event live on air. Yes, in just a few moments, a total solar eclipse will be sweeping across America and we'll be bringing you a front row seat to all the action. Look at that, it's so exciting. And who better to enjoy it with than the Sky at Night presenter, Dame Dr. Maggie Adair in Pocock, who's here to take us through the biggest cosmic event of the year and we'll be sharing some of the first amazing images being captured live by NASA. Yeah, she will indeed. Plus, uh, she'll be introducing us to one family with a passion for planets who've saved up to travel across the world and witness the magical moment for themselves. That is brilliant. They love that, don't they? What, an, what a special holiday. Uh, right, but first, we're just moments away from seeing the first live images from NASA as the solar eclipse begins to move across North America. We're going to be joined by Dame Dr Maggie Adair in Pocock to talk us through them. But before that, she's been meeting up with some space enthusiasts to hear why tonight's event is such a special occasion. It's a magical moment when the Earth, Moon and Sun are perfectly aligned to produce a solar eclipse. The last time the UK saw a total solar eclipse was back in 1999. But the weather was far from ideal in Cornwall, where many had gathered to watch. Cloud cover meant the viewing conditions on the ground were dismal. But high above those clouds was a man with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Camera operator Eugene Campbell was sent up in an RAF Hercules aircraft to capture the eclipse from above the clouds. Luckily, the Hercules is quite a unique aircraft in that there's an awful lot of windows in the cockpit. We had an amazing RAF crew who got us to be got us into the right place at the right time to be able to, to, to film the eclipse. I was literally on my hands and knees, hand holding the camera, pointing at the sun at the point of totality so that we could beam pictures live from 20 or 1,000 feet onto the ground. Eugene was using a camera filter he'd made himself. And then at the very end of this was a little homemade filter in front of the lens that was made from a cornflakes packet and some camera tape and a filter on it. Everything that on paper should have gone wrong didn't and we got it right and I just felt really proud to be a small part of that. It was 16 years before the UK got a sniff of another solar eclipse. But 2015 only gave us a partial one, which was far less exciting than a total solar eclipse. We've got a bit of a wait till the next one. 66 years, in fact. So it's not surprising that enthusiasts across the UK are prepared to go to extraordinary lengths to see this phenomenon. Across Mexico, the US and Canada, a most spectacular total solar eclipse is taking place. In Manchester, the Lamb family are getting ready for the trip of a lifetime. They're off to the US to join tens of millions of Americans looking skyward. What interests me with it is really the side of it where it goes dark and potentially the nightlife comes out, you know, the animals, the nocturnal animals. I found out that Texas Hill Country is going to have four and a half minutes of totality. So that was the kind of place I went for. We've waited so long, we've saved as much as we possibly can and we put off a lot, but it was so important to have that family time, tear ourselves away from our day jobs and really spend some good time with the boys and experience something magical with them. So are you looking forward to seeing the totality? Yeah. We've all got Eclipse t-shirts made on the ranch, you know, Have for we? the event. Yeah, yeah. This year's Eclipse has seen tour companies sell out months in advance. Brian McGee has been leading astronomy tours since the late 1970s. What sort of people go on these sort of uh, solar eclipse journeys? Well, there used to be people who were quite focused on astronomy, but you don't have to know anything about astronomy at all to appreciate a total solar eclipse. I have the challenge of getting all of the logistics in place for, in the case of the next one, it's going to be close on a thousand people. So how many total solar eclipses have you seen? Uh, I'm just coming up to number 25. Mm. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I only clocked up two, but they were magical. <laughs> if you're saved up for a trip like this, you want to be able to take the perfect picture. Award-winning landscape astrophotographer Josh Jury has turned his passion for capturing the night sky into his profession. I've been interested in eclipses since 1999, so I want to try and see as many more of them as I can. Just to see really the changes from one eclipse to the next. 
I remember when I was at school, I had images which are poor by today's quality, but it was what made me inspired by the world of astronomy. Have you got any tips for someone who's going to see their first eclipse? So for anyone seeing their first, it may be worth just looking at it for the first time. Others who have got a bit more experience, go and take some photographs. Do a rehearsal at the time before the eclipse, whether that's taking images of the moon or even the sun itself with the appropriate filters. Astrophotographers, veteran eclipse chasers and ordinary families. As a scientist, I find it inspiring to know that thousands of people from across the UK are travelling to experience the magnificence of this solar eclipse for themselves. Oh, well, Josh has reached Dallas and he's sent us this uh, picture. Uh, the eclipse will be reaching him in about 20 minutes, hopefully. Well, he's got he's getting the shot for us, isn't he? Let's be honest. I know he's gonna he is. Be and it. like Josh, remember to protect your eyes if you're looking up at the sun, right? Joining us to tell us more about this incredible lunar phenomenon, Dame and Doctor Maggie Adair and Pocock. Welcome. <laughs> Big congratulations on the Dame Hood, Maggie. We're going to come to that in a bit. But look I at this, this, these <sighs> images. I cannot wait any longer to, for you to tell us what's happening. We're seeing this live from NASA. Yes. What are we seeing here? So this is actually what we call totality. So now we've got sort of the shadow of the moon. So the moon has passed in front of the sun. We can see that sort of that, that golden sort of glow around it. That's the sun's corona, its outer atmosphere, which usually we can't see because um, the sun is just too bright. And so, yes, what's lovely about this eclipse is it's very long. It lasts about four and a half minutes depending on where you are um eclipse is usually sort of two maybe one and a half minutes so this is one of the longest ones in centuries so it's just wonderful to me i'm very jealous <laughs> and, and that's obviously that's why it's so special is it is there, is there anything else that kind of like information wise that you'd be able to gather from it well yes um so um because we can see the corona of the sun from earth at the moment scientists across the world will go and see these yeah. and actually sort of a, because the corona is partly governed by the sun's magnetic field and so you get prominences and all sorts coming out of the sun so it's a way of sort of analysing the sun uh, without actually going up into space. So it's a, a wonderful opportunity, but also magical too. I know you, you said in the film you've seen two of these eclipses. What's it like in, in real life experiencing one? It's funny because as a scientist, I sort of have a good understanding that you know, so you've got the sun behind and the moon goes in front and so you've got the shadow cast on Earth. But at the same time, when you're actually there, it is. It's, oh, it, it, it's transcendent because... Um, all nature starts responding. So first of all, the light gets really weird. It's sort of like a hard light, but it's dark. And then you, the birds start going to roost because it's getting darker. So they think, oh, hey, it's night time. So they start sort of settling down. And then you get this sort of this, this moment of totality where you see <clears throat> sort of the corona, you see the dark shadow of the moon. And what's lovely about this is it's a, a cosmic coincidence. The moon is just at the right distance um, mm. from the Earth, and the sun is just the right distance. So the moon totally covers the, um, the Earth. The sun, even though it's a lot smaller. Yes, and in the future, as the moon moves away from us, we won't get this. We'll get what we call an annular eclipse, where you have a sort of a big glowing ring around yeah. this. So it is a wonderful thing to see. Right. It's fascinating, really. Is there any way, like close to home, that people can even get a little glimpse of it? Yes. So um, although this is totality, which is the real, the real deal. The dream. Uh, um, in uh, sort of the Western Isles of Scotland, um, as the sun is setting now, they might be able to see um, a little, a partial eclipse. So maybe a small nibble at the sun. As just said, be careful, never look directly at the sun. Yeah. But you can see a small nibble. But um, the next total solar eclipse in the UK is not till 2090. So 20 what? 2090. Was like, wow, I was about to book the day off work. That's <laughs> not going to work, is it? You're going to wait a bit. <laughs> but there are others going across the world. But this one is particularly special because of the length. And yeah, when you see a total solar eclipse, when I saw my first one, I saw it and I took it all in and I thought, oh, magical. And then I had to sit down because I was just sort of disorientated because of the majesty of it, yeah. really. No, it is incredible, it really is. Um, oh, yeah, oh, look, look at that. that. It's just, sort of a breakthrough. Just coming back. Oh, the diamond oh, ring oh, effect. Oh, what? As, as, as it moves across My and we Lord. see... Uh, and see, that's a tiny slither of sun, but how bright it is. Yeah. Our sun incredible. is amazing. <laughs> that's our star, isn't it? Yeah, our yeah. local star. star. Yeah. Absolutely Man. incredible. I've got to start talking again now. I'm not staring at it. Just like, I know. Actually, I'm just, it draws I'm just you in, doesn't out. it? Yeah. <laughs> you get me I know. Um, Maggie, quickly, what, the last time you were here, I mean, you had a Barbie. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, their own Maggie Barbie. What way round did the titles go? Dame, Barbie, <laughs> Doctor. There we go, yeah. Now the Dame Hoods. I mean, congratulations on that. Thank um, you so much. <laughs> how, how does it feel? It, just, it, it doesn't feel real sometimes. Yeah. And also, sometimes you think, um, sort of, a, I think of dames and sort of amazing, wonderful women. I think, my goodness, am I one of them? Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> 100% you are. I... That's why you've been given it. You deserve it. 
But I think there were some fantastic women out there, so we, we, need, we need more dames. But uh, it was just such an honour and such a surprise as well. Uh, when the letter came through, I thought, hey, come on, someone's, <laughs> <laughs> someone's having a joke here. <laughs> definitely not, definitely not. Congratulations. So Thank you so much. You, Maggie. you can catch Maggie on the sky at night tonight, 9.30 on BBC4 and iPlayer. Thank you so much. Tomorrow we'll be joined by actor Eddie Marsan and Dr Sir Michael, Dr and Sir Michael Palin. <laughs> Have a great evening. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>